I'm Nancy Drew. This is my center of operations, my desk. Go ahead and poke around. If you want to know the particulars of how I do what I do, take a look at the book titled How to Be a Detective. It's real helpful, especially if you're new to the mystery solving business. And be sure to check out my scrapbook. I put memorabilia from all my past cases in there. A lot of them were pretty dangerous and at times really scary. But don't say anything about that to my dad, okay? He worries about me enough as it is. And whatever you do, read what's in the file called Case File. That'll tell you all about the mystery I'm about to try to solve. If you think you're ready to dive into that mystery, just click on the plane ticket and you'll be on your way. And look what we have here. We have another Nancy Drew game. That's right. We are playing Nancy Drew, The Haunting of Castle Malloy. Now, Malloy? Malloy? Something like that. You know what it is. Uh, recently, I have played White Wolf of Icicle Creek, Legend of Crystal Skull, and The Phantom of Venice. Of course, I've played all of the newer Nancy Drew games as well. For a selection of them, just go ahead and look in the video description. There'll be, I don't know, half a dozen of them ready for you to check out. However, we need to get into this one. This is the new one, number 19. Let's find out what's going on in the case file. When Kyler Mallory called me from her home in London and asked me to be her maid of honor, I was a little reluctant. After all, I hadn't seen her since she stayed with us as an exchange student a couple of years ago. But when she told me the wedding is going to take place at an old family castle in Ireland, <laughs> how could I say no? The wedding will be very small, but Kyler still needs help with all the final preparations, which means she'd like me to arrive several days early. So I'm going to fly to Dublin, rent a car, and meet Kyler at Castle Malloy. She warned me that the place is somewhat in need of repairs, whatever that means. And unfortunately, by the time I get there, it'll be night. But I've never been to Ireland before, and I've never even seen a real honest-to-goodness castle, let alone stayed in one. So the fact that it may be dark and run down just makes it more of an adventure. And you know me, whenever the question is, who wants to go on an adventure? My answer is always, I do. <laughs> Whoa, isn't that a wedding thing, too? All right, Nancy, so we're going to go and uh, go to Ireland, it looks like. Woohoo! Okay, time for us to select difficulties. For those of you that have watched me play other Nancy Drew games, I always select Senior. Always, always, always. I enjoy the challenge. Yes, I know there's not a lot of hints and there's not a lot of extra help, but I enjoy the challenge of Senior Detective, so that's what I play. I do play a lot of casual adventure games that I play on, well, casual, so I like to mix it up. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and slap that Senior Detective badge. Ooh, New York, all the way over. Ooh, look, Halifax, St. John's. I've been to St. John's. That's in Newfoundland. Preparation for our landing. Please make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Thank you. I've actually been to Halifax as well. So your plane was on time, your luggage arrived, your rental car was waiting, everything went without a hitch? Yep, and according to Kyler's directions, I'm within two kilometers of Castle Malloy. Now stop worrying about me and get over to the Dunhills. What time is it there? Around two. The party just started. It's gonna go all day, so I've got plenty of time. Are you driving? Yes, Ned, I'm talking on my cell phone while I'm driving, but it's okay. There's absolutely no traffic. And I think I see the gates. I gotta go. Say hi to the Dunhills for me and have fun. Without you? Yeah, right. Take care, Nancy. Oh, no! Oh. Uh... What was that? I don't know, but it freaked me out. So much for the rental car. Nancy, you smashed it. So wait, am I actually supposed to do something here? Oh wow, I control Nancy in this... Oh, <laughs> I've never did it like this before. <laughs> this is great. The Screaming Banshee. Oh boy. Let's open that up. Hello? Welcome to Leprecom Telephone Service. Please insert your calling card. I don't have one. Ah, look at that. The stickers. Phone card to the rescue. Love the stickers there. Okay, phone card. Go. Uh, Bess. Hi. 
if you're trying to reach Bess Marvin or her super cool cousin, George Vane, you're out of luck because neither of us can pick up right now. But be sure to leave a message or call back, okay? Because you know what they say. Your call is very important to us. Hi, guys. Just wanted to see what's going on there and tell you what's going on here. <laughs> Catch you later. Bye. <laughs> That's adorable. Let's call Ned back. Uh, Ned, I... Hi, this is Ned. I can't answer the phone right now, so either leave me a message or just call me back. Bye. Hi, Ned. It's me. Just checking in from the Emerald Isle. Call you later. Bye. Okay, I guess uh, he is uh, getting himself ready for the party that we're not invited to. Which is a real shame. So I guess we should go inside. Ah, oh, we've got some Celtic music. Haha. -ha. We are in Ireland. Oh, are we gonna have to do darts? Oh no. Darts away. <laughs> we'll do that later. We're just gonna kind of. Uh, usually, what I do with the first uh, Nancy you Drew episode is I just sort of uh, work on getting my bearings, you know. Explore a little bit. Oh, it's a fan, I think. Actually, I have no idea who these people are. I'm assuming they're fans. Because I know her, her interactive likes to put the fans in the uh, game. Which is cool. Okay, so... Go back, I guess? Got some funky tunes. I don't want to go here, game. I don't know where else I can go. Backwards? Be out the gate here, okay. Maybe we don't want to go that way. Maybe we want to go this way. Sure, why not? What is this way? Ooh, this is super creepy. Ah. Uh, it's a sheep! <laughs> bah! Say it. There you go. Called it. Totally called it. So what did I get here? What is this? It's a doll, I think. Kind of a dapper doll. Not sure I see anything else here. Let's go over this way. It looks like we got some sort of puzzle we're gonna have to do. Oh no. This is gonna take me a while to do this puzzle. All right, well, again, I'm. Uh, this is my first episode, so I'm more just exploring the sites here. I don't have any intention of getting into uh, too much trouble in this episode. So uh, don't worry too much about that. So I'll come back and I'll do this puzzle at a later date. Although as I talk here, I'm just sort of mucking about with it. But uh, yeah, my goal is not to get too heavily involved. Because I just want to, uh, you know, just sort of uh, play around and get used to the surroundings. So, okay, can I get out of here, game? Can I? There we go. Thank you. I want to see what's this way. Oh. Okay. So what, I'm not allowed to go that way? Uh, can I walk this way? No, I cannot. So it looks like I can only go to two different places. I can't get into my car. So... What am I supposed to do? Can I just go forward? Ah, here we go. Now we're in business. This is a... This gap in light here is creepy. I don't want to get off the beaten path here. No thank you. I will stay on the well-lit path. Hello? Hi there. Oh, I, um, um, hello. I'm Nancy Drew. I'm here for the wedding. The wedding's been called off. So go on back to where you come from. No, wait, please. My car's in the ditch by the gate. I can't go anywhere. Walk down the road to the inn, then. Give me your keys, and I'll see to your car in the morning. I left the keys in the car. Can I at least talk to Kyler? She's sleeping. No, wait. I came all the way from the States. 
You cannot stay here. Go to the inn, I said. Now off with you. But I've been to the inn. They don't have any rooms. I've got to stay here. Hello? Are you there? Hello? No, why is he so mean? Let me in there. I can't stay at the inn. There are no rooms. Please open the door. Oh. Well, that's just mean. There's somebody up there. I'll bet it's Kyler. Okay, how do I get their attention? Do I have anything to throw at it? Throw the doll! Oh. Don't throw the doll. I thought I could throw the doll. Okay. Oh, I see. I got rocks. Oh my goodness. Big one. Little one. Uh, okay. How do I know where to put this thing? I'm terrible at throwing rocks. Oh, ding ding. Oh, I gotta break it, do I? Ah, oh, crap. Okay. Let's try with a big one first. Oh. <laughs> uh -oh. Oops. Tyler, hi! Really? I had to break your window for you to let me in? Alright. Knock, knock. Deaf are you now? I told you, you cannot be staying here. Oh, what are you doing? That's Nancy Drew, my maid of honor. Let her in. Yeah, seriously, dude. Step away. Step back. Matt's disappeared? How can somebody you came all the way out here with to marry just disappear? He hasn't disappeared for good. You have to understand, Matt's a bit of a prankster, and the wedding is still days away. Ah, uh, well... You mean the wedding hasn't been called off? Absolutely not. He'll show up. Mind you, it may not be till I've started down the aisle, but he'll show saying he just wanted to make this a wedding no one shall ever forget. Why did that man at the door tell me the wedding was off? That was the caretaker, Donald Delaney. Not Donald, mind you. There's no D at the end, so it's pronounced Donal. That's the way you're supposed to spell it, which is to say that's the way the Irish spell it. Proud of his heritage, huh? Indeed. Which would be tolerable if his love for the Irish wasn't accompanied by an abiding distaste for the British. Now, he rather likes me, but that's only because he considers me to be Irish, since I'm directly related to the man who used to own this place. When it comes to my British fiancé, Donald detests him. Which is why he was so quick to tell you the wedding's off. He wants it to be off. He came right out and said, if I am to be married in Castle Malloy, it simply must be to an Irishman. Said my marrying a Brit would... Upset the fairy people, or whatever he calls them. <laughs> the fairy people? Really? Wow. Are we talking leprechauns? What do you mean? You sure the wedding shouldn't at least be postponed? I'm telling you, he'll show. You see, sometimes I hear him. You know, his voice. It's very faint and muffled, but it sounds like he's calling to me. Saying things I can't quite make out. Teasing me, the lout. So I know he's somewhere close by. He'll be here for the wedding. I'd stake my life on it. Of course, I remember well your penchant for solving mysteries. So if you want to give this one a go, by all means do. You could start in the nursery. It's down the hall. That's where Matt had set up his cot and was spending most of his time. Find him, Nancy. Having my maid of honor ruin this silly vanishing trick of his would teach him a lesson he sorely needs. Yeah, I'm thinking Donald, dear Donald, needs a serious lesson here. Like, why would you put your bride, your future wife, through all that? Someone ran out in front Crazy. of my car on my way here and caused me to drive into a ditch. Are you all right? Me, I'm fine. My car and my cell phone, uh, not so good. And I'm pretty sure whomever I saw dropped this. Looks like some kind of homemade doll. The clothes. It looks like Matt. And that's his ring. What did the person who dropped this look like? 
scary I didn't witch. really get a good look. It was dark, and I was distracted, and it moved so fast. Frankly, I'm not even sure if what I saw was a person. Denal, the caretaker. When we realized Matt was gone, straight away Denal claimed Matt had been kidnapped by fairies. Which is, of course, utterly ridiculous. It was probably Matt himself you saw, tricked out in some costume and leaving that door behind just to confound us. Well, I do hope he's enjoying himself, because as soon as we're married, that will be that. No more <laughs> practical jokes. Ever. <laughs> oh, wow. I... Uh, yeah, I don't think you're going to be able to change him. I'm sorry. <laughs> Although, that's adorable that you would think you could, simply by marrying him. But you can't. <laughs> oh, so well written. Okay. Well, I guess we still got a few more things to do. Let's continue our conversation. Does it bother you to be here all by yourself? Actually, Matt's best friend Kit Foley is here too. He set up a cot in the Great Hall downstairs. When did he arrive? We all came out together. Where does Mr. Delaney live? All I know is he comes at dawn and leaves at sunset. I can't fathom what he does all day, but he always seems to be puttering away at something. When he's not working, he spends most of his time down the road at the Screaming Banshee Inn. Who pays him? My grandfather's estate. Apparently, Grandpapa considered Denol to be as much a part of Castle Malloy as those moldy old tapestries you see everywhere. I should let him go. All he ever talks about are banshees and fairies and leprechauns. And he can be quite obstinate, as you saw at the door. But if Grandpapa saw fit to put up with him all those years, I suppose I can too. Huh. When you said you sometimes hear Matt, where are you when that happens? In here? In here, in the nursery, sometimes outside. His voice is always very muffled and very, very faint, so I can never tell where it's coming from or, or what he's saying. But it's Matt, I'm sure of it. Are you really, really sure? And you've looked all over for him? When it became apparent he was missing, we searched everywhere, for hours. We were afraid he'd gone wading and drowned or something, or wandered into the bog, or gotten lost out on the moor. But we found no footprints, no clothes lying around, nothing. So when I heard his voice, it dawned on me he was playing one of his outlandish pranks. I was furious with him, but truth be told, it was also a bit of a relief. What are you doing in here, if you don't mind my asking? Reading. About myself, in a way. You see, until my grandpapa died and left me this place, not only did I have no idea that this castle existed, but I had no idea my real name was not Mallory, but Malloy. Apparently, grandpapa changed his name 50 years ago, so no one would find out he was Irish. Huh. Okay. Why didn't he want people to find out he was Irish? I think it had something to do with his brother, Brendan, the man who owned this place and was living here when it exploded during World War II. He was rumored to have been a double agent, supposedly doing top-secret research for the Allies, but in truth, passing his findings onto the Axis. Not exactly a brother you want people to know about. If the rumors were true. Anyway, ever since I found out I'm a Malloy, I can't stop reading about Ireland. So many different people have populated this country at one time or another. The Celts, the Druids, the Gaels. It's all quite fascinating. I agree. All these books were Brandon's? I can't be certain, but I assume so. He was quite the inventor, I do know that. Everything that remains in this place seems as if it's been tinkered with. Even his daughter's dollhouse, of all things. Okay. I'd better get to work. The five months I spent living with you, your dad, and Hannah. And Togo, of course. That was a very Aww. happy time for me, Nancy. I can't tell you how thrilled I am you're here. I get to see you again, and I get to see Ireland? <laughs> I'm the one who's thrilled, believe me. Let me know if there's anything else I can do for you. I'm your maid of honor, remember? I haven't forgotten. I've got duties to do as the maid of honor. Well, that was quite a bit of story for us to sink our teeth into. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back in the next video, which will be up very soon. Thank you all for watching. We're playing Nancy Drew again. Yay! This is the haunting of Castle Malloy. Bye for now.